All right, guys, so now we're going to jump back into our HTML and we're going to add the three boxes. When what I mean is this right here, this location, meals and fitness room, these features. Okay, so I'm going to give this a section with the ID of features and then each one is going to be a div and I'm going to give it a class of box and we're going to style that bo those boxes. So let's go down below our last section, which was the home info. And again, if you watch me build websites and themes, this is like I said, I usually have a header and then I'll build on each section. And if you if you take my bootstrap class uh, bootstrap course on Udemy, I do the same exact thing. It doesn't matter if I'm using a framework or if I'm using uh, just HTML5. So let's do section and let's give this an ID of features. Okay, and within this features section, we're going to have three boxes. So I'm actually going to do let's do dot box and let's use our Emmet trick of doing uh, asterisk three, enter a tab and it'll give us three divs with the class of box. So inside here, we're going to have the icon. I'm going to get to that after. So let's just skip the icon for now and let's do an H3. And let's say great location. And then we're going to have a paragraph which is going to have, uh, I believe, 10 words. Let's do Lorem 10 like that. And then we want the same thing inside these two boxes. So we'll paste that in there and there. And let's just change the heading for the second one to free meals. And then this third one is going to be fitness room. Okay, so just a list of what the amenities, the features, and we'll save that. Let's go down. So it's going to look like this by default. Now, before we get to the CSS, let's add the icons. Now, these icons come from Font Awesome. So if we go to Font Awesome, uh, FontAwesome.com, and go to Start Using Free, it's going to give us a link tag that goes to this all.css style sheet, which allows us to use those fonts. So we just want to double click this and copy it. So I'm going to control C and then let's paste it up top here above our link. So control V will paste that in. And now since we have this included, we can use certain classes that will give us certain icons. Now the font awesome website allows us to search for icons. So building, I actually want to search for a hotel and it's going to give us some results. Now there is a pro version to font awesome. I believe it's like $50 a year. I'm not sure. I don't have the pro subscription, uh, but usually the first one, see how there's three hotels, three H squares. Usually the first one is, is free. And then these ones, as you can see, they have the little pro icon. So we want this first one, this first hotel. I'm going to click on it. And what we want to look at here, it shows us the icon, different sizes and stuff. Uh, but what we want to look at is this tag, this I tag with this class. And you're going to have two classes. You're going to have one that's just the font awesome class. And then you have one that is the actual uh, what the icon is. In this case, it's the hotel. So we can actually just click it and it copies it for us. And then we can go back into our HTML. Let's go right above this H3 and paste that in. Let's bring that over and we'll save it. And let's go back to our page here and notice now we have a little hotel icon. Now this is too small. We could change the font size. After all, it is a font, but there's actually classes that we can use to change the size. So if we add in a class here of FA dash three X, Okay, so you have two X to three to five X, I believe, and it will change. It'll basically be three times as big. So let's save it and go back. And now we have a much bigger icon. Okay, so the other icons we want, I'm just going to copy this I tag here and we're going to paste one in right above free meals. This one is called FA utensils. Okay, so if we went and searched for whatever food, it'll show us the, the utensils icon. Um, and then this one here is FA dash dumbbell. Okay, let's save that and take a look. And now we have our three icons. So that's it for the HTML for this part. Now let's style it. So we're going to go to style CSS. 
and let's go down to the bottom here. So we want to do our features section, which is basically just the box or we could do a. Hmm. I'm trying to think if we are going to if we're going to use these boxes anywhere else. I don't think so. I mean, you could use the box as a utility class if you were going to use them. Actually, yeah, let's just do dot box in case we use them somewhere else. So each box we're going to float left, okay? Even though, you know, they're all going to be in a row, it's not like a left and a right. We want we want them all to float left, just like we do with the menu items with the list items. It'll make them go horizontal. And then the width we're going to set to 33.3%, okay? Cuz we want them to be we want them to all be even and there's three of them. and then for padding let's do 50 pixels and since we have border box up here as a, a value for box sizing since we put that there this padding will not get added to the width if you don't put the border box then it's going to get added and it's it's not going to look right okay and then the last thing is i just want to align everything to the center so text align uh, center and let's save that and take a look good so now everything is aligned horizontally uh, i do want to add a margin bottom to the actual i tag to the icon so let's say dot box i and let's say margin dash bottom 10 pixels okay now for the background. Now remember we have those utility classes, the BG classes. So instead of coloring uh you know adding box or whatever, um we're going to grab on to those classes and put them in our HTML. So this first div with the class of box, I want it to have a light background, so I'm going to add BG light. And we've already add, added the style for these. The second one is going to be BG dash uh primary because we want it to be that tan color and then the last one again is bg dash white and save uh okay so it looks like i made a mistake earlier i think i put the the color as tan here for bg primary where it should be on the background not the color so let's head back up to bg primary and where is it yeah right here bg primary so the background should be this not that and then uh let's see the color should be that i believe or is the color white let me check uh no that's right but let's just move background to the top like that all right so let's save and now the background is the color not the actual text. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we want to do the footer. So let's head back to our HTML and remember we have a semantic HTML5 footer tag. So right under the section, let's do footer. And I'm actually going to give it an ID of main footer. And the reason for for this is because you may have You can have footers in other places. It doesn't have to mean a website footer, like a page footer. It could be a footer to, let's say, an article. Maybe you have articles where you have a head, a header, and then you have a footer at the bottom with maybe the author's name and stuff like that. So you don't always have to think of headers and footers as page headers and footers. So let's put a paragraph in here, and let's just say hotel. BT let's do our copyright entity so ampersand copy semicolon uh we'll do 2019 all rights reserved okay let's save that so by default it's going to look like this we need to add a little bit of styling so we'll go back to our style sheet and let's grab on to the main footer let's say put a comment in here and we'll say main dash footer and first of all I want to align everything to the center. OK, 
Okay, we're going to add a background. Actually, no, you know what we'll do is we'll use the BG dark on the footer. Um, wait a minute. Nope, we're not going to do that because we want it to be a little lighter than the BG dark. So we actually will add a background. Let's do 444, which is a shade lighter. Okay, so let's make the color white. And let's add padding all around 20 pixels. Let's save that. Check it out. Okay. Um, let's see. What we, why isn't there padding? Oh, you know what it is? We since these three are uh, have been floated, we need to actually clear that float. So let's go up to where our utility classes are. We'll go under the last background here and do CLR. And let's say float. I'm sorry, not float clear. Both and then go back to our HTML and right above the footer. Let's put in a class of CLR and save. And now you can see that it's pushed down. And that's again, that's another thing that just really sucks about using floats over uh, CSS grid or Flexbox is is this clearing stuff. <laughs> that's why I forget. All right. So our home page looks done. And again, it's not completely responsive. I mean, it's somewhat responsive as far as having the max width, like the text doesn't go out of the page or anything like that. But there are some things I would add and I would add some media queries, which we're going to talk about later on. Uh, but for now, I think that our home page is pretty good. So in the next video, we're going to move on to the about page, which isn't too bad. Uh, we're just going to have some text, uh, a rounded image, some testimonials. Then we'll move on to the contact page and we should be all set. And then I'll show you how we can actually deploy this website to the Internet.